Hello there. It's another time for another lesson in ecology. This time around, we'll be looking at functioning ecosystem. Now, our objectives for this lesson is that learners will be able to classify living things on the basis of nutrition, giving examples. Describe the flow of energy in an ecosystem through food chains and food web. Construct food chains and food webs. Learners should be able to describe the various ecological pyramids and their significance and describe energy transformation in an ecosystem. Now moving along, we are going to be classifying living things in an ecosystem. Now, an ecosystem consists of the biotic and abiotic factors or components. And all living things, that is the biotic factors, in the ecosystem can be classified into autotrophs. What are autotrophs? Autotrophs are living organisms that produce their own food and they are also called producers now why are they called producers they are called producers because they produce their own food you know using the energy from sunlight and inorganic materials like water and carbon dioxide to manufacture their own food through photosynthesis and that's why plants are called autotrophs because they are the ones that manufacture their own food and we also have heterotrophs heterotrophs are organisms that depend on others for food they don't produce their own food and they are also called consumers now generally animals are classified as consumers because they don't manufacture their own food and lastly we have the decomposers now what are the decomposers Decomposers are living organisms that break down dead organic matter. They break down dead organic matter. And examples of decomposers are bacteria and fungi. Generally, bacteria and fungi, they are called decomposers. Now, moving along, we'll be looking at energy flow in an ecosystem. Now, energy flow in an ecosystem is described using a food chain and a food web so we'll be looking first at the food chain now a food chain is a linear feeding relationship in which energy from food is transferred from one organism to another now this is a typical example of a food chain now first you must understand that food chains are made up of three components the producers the consumers and the decomposers the these are the these are the organisms that make up a food chain now this is a typical example of a food chain we have grass that is green plants or grass which are producers and we have four types of consumers here we have four types of consumers here we have the primary consumer now the primary consumer feed directly on producers and they are also called herbivores herbivores are animals that feed directly on plants now a typical example is the grass hopper now moving along we have the secondary consumer now the secondary consumer are also called carnivores they feed on they feed on flesh they are animals that feed on flesh now this blue bed is an example of a carnivore now the snake also which is a tertiary consumer is also a carnivore and we have another type another type of consumer which is called omnivore now omnivores feed on both flesh and plants they feed on both flesh and plants they are the third category of consumers here we have tertiary consumers tertiary consumer which is a snake feeds on secondary consumer and we have another type of consumer which is quaternary consumer the owl in this case is a quaternary consumer because it feeds on tertiary consumers now the food chain is incomplete without the decomposers because the decomposers are the ones that break down dead organic matter if this owl dies or snake or bluebird once they die decomposers they are the ones that break that break down uh, their bodies and they they make the nutrients inside these dead plants and animals they make it available in the soil 
and the plants will make use of the nutrients in the soil to grow so hereby causing the cycle of the food chain to continue so that's the work of the decomposer in the food chain they continue the cycle of the food now chain. moving along we'll be looking at the food web now a food web is a combination of many interlinking food chains now a food web consists of all the food chains in a single ecosystem now this is an example of a food web this is an example of a food web now we said that a food web is made up of various food chains now i want you to pause this video and find out the number of all the food chains that are contained in this food web now let me give you an example we have the grass the grass is eaten by the rabbit and the rabbit is eaten by the fox now another example is that we have the grass the grass is eaten by the mouse the mouse is eaten by the fox so this is just two food chains that i've identified i want to pause this video and identify the other food chains found in this food web now moving along we'll be looking at the ecological pyramids what are ecological pyramids ecological pyramids describe the graphical representation of a food chain based on number of organisms total dry weight and energy now there are three bas basic types of ecological pyramids we have the pyramid of numbers pyramid of biomass and pyramid of energy now if we look at this particular ecological pyramid now you can see that this is a pyramid shape and at the base of the pyramid we have the most we have the producers the producers are the grasses then we have the primary consumer secondary consumer and tertiary consumer now this ecological pyramid shows or yes puts all the organisms in the food chain um, showing their trophic level their trophic level shows the various stages or the various uh, feeding stage that you know a food chain organisms in the food chain are found in so the producer this is trophic this is one trophic level for the producer this is one trophic level for the primary consumer this is one trophic level for the secondary consumer and the final trophic level here for the tertiary consumer now looking at the pyramids one after the other we are starting with the pyramid of numbers in this pyramid the number of organisms are arranged in each trophic level the organisms at the base which are the producers here which are the grasses are the most abundant while the organisms at the top are the least abundant so you can see in this pyramid of number you can see that the grasses which are the producers are the most abundant while the hawk here which is the top carnivore is the least abundant now moving along we have the pyramid of biomass the pyramid of biomass shows the dry mass of all the individual organisms in each trophic level of the food chain now when we talk about the dry mass the dry mass is the mass of an organism when water is removed from from it the dry mass decreases from the first organism producer to the last organism so you can see from the pyramid here you can see that the producers are the one which have the largest um, the largest amount of dry mass followed by the um, carnivores here so you can see that the dry weight which is expressed in kil um, in kil they are expressed in kilograms per meter square so you can see that the dry weight decreases from the producer to the carnivores you can see in this diagram now moving along we also have the pyramid of energy now the pyramid of energy is the best description of uh, a food chain is the best diag diagrammatic description of the food chain now the pyramid of energy shows the amount of energy stored in organisms at each trophic level in a food chain the amount of energy decreases progressively from the base of the pyramid to the top looking at this pyramid of energy you can see that the energy which is being transmitted from one trophic level to the other decreases as you move from the producer to the tertiary consumer now moving along we'll be looking at energy transformation in nature now in any ecosystem the major source of energy 
is from the sun so the solar energy is the uh, solar energy is the major source of energy in any ecosystem now the energy from the sun is transformed or or converted by plants to chemical energy through the process of photosynthesis now some of this energy is passed on to the consumers in other words only 10 percent is passed from one organism to the next organism while most of it is lost to the environment in the form of heat energy now the reason for this is that some of this energy does not get consumed in other words few organisms eat an entire organism and also the majority of the energy an organism receives is lost as heat through respiration as organisms move and carry out other life's processes the transformation of energy in nature is explained using the laws of thermodynamics now we're going to be looking at the laws of thermodynamics here the first law of thermodynamics states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed but can be transformed from one form of energy to another now if you look at energy flow in this particular picture right here you can see that energy from the sun that solar energy is transformed into chemical energy through the process of photosynthesis by green plants and also as energy is transformed from um, as energy moves from the plant to the rabbit here you see uh, that energy is in terms uh, you, um, is in terms or through the energy transformation from the green plant to the rabbit is through respiration and in respiration chemical energy is transformed into heat energy so you can see that energy is transformed from one form of energy to another in the ecosystem now the second law states that during the transformation of energy from one form to another energy is lost in form of heat so you can see that this is the reason 10 percent of energy is usually transmitted from one trophic level from one um, organism from one trophic level to the other so you can see that let's assume that the producer has 10,000 kilocalories only 10 percent of that energy is utilized by the rabbit while the rest is lost in form of heat so you can see that you have 1,000 kilocalories which is 10 percent of 10,000 kilocalories transmitted from the from plants to rabbits and only 10 percent to the snake which is 10 kilocalorie 100 kilocalorie pardon me then from the snake to the eagle we have only 10 kilocalorie while the rest of it is lost in form of heat now these laws explain the flow of transfer of energy within a cool system now this brings us to the end of our lesson for today now, let's look at the summary quickly an ecosystem is made up of both biotic and abiotic factors or components the biotic components can be classified into autotrophs heterotrophs and decomposers the transfer of energy in an ecosystem can be described using the food chain and food web now ecological pyramids give a diagrammatic representation of a food chain these are the pyramids of number energy and biomass energy transformation in nature is explained through the laws of time dynamics now i want to pause this video and go through this assessment to see how much of the lesson you have learned or imbibed and i'll see you again in the next biology lesson bye bye